happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega. I'm here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Today's topic is happiness off the cuff, number three. Um, Lionel's not here with us today. Um, he's off, you know, making people happier somewhere. So um, so this is going to be like, you know, we'd, we've done a couple of these shows where we just like free ourselves to um, to talk about whatever we want to <laughs> and so since it's only me today I'm gonna just like extemporaneously talk about happiness um, I want to start out with I think something that's very very important um, this is kind of like a global scenario of like where we are now with the world where we've been and where we're, we're going okay when when you think about this, you know, if you go back a few thousand years, um, the great struggle for mankind was like finding an abundant, stable source of food, you know, so people didn't have to worry about starving, you know, like about hunting and all this. All right, so we developed agriculture. We, we developed the ability to like farm and to, you know, to harvest and to keep that harvest over the winter, et cetera. That was like this great agricultural revolution okay and like naturally this was for our happiness because you know everything everything in life is about happiness so certainly surviving and not you know going um, for long periods without food is going to be about happiness and I imagine that has made it um, that that certainly has made it um, easier for many people throughout the world to become much happier especially in the industrialized worlds all right so then um, you know but, you know, I don't think that, um, I think that made a difference, but, you know, I think there was um, more that we kind of like thought in our mind, well, if we did this, if we had, you know, this or something, then that would help us to become happier. And so that we went through the Industrial Revolution, you know, where, where we just like, kind of like freed ourselves from so many tasks that were so unpleasant for us to do like you know in agriculture there's so many of the harvesting tasks in in textiles you know just all this weaving and all we we just created all these machines to do so much work for us and you know that i imagine um helped our world become happier you know it just freed our, freed our time a bit more and again the intention of the industrial revolution was to make us happier. Now, here's a, here's a pretty interesting point. Um, basically, while the Industrial Revolution may have helped to a certain extent, it, it's very telling that like some of the happiest countries in the world are countries like Nigeria, Mexico, um, El Salvador, Venezuela. These countries are, are you know, s rather poor. They're not all that industrialized. And, and I mean, we're here in the United States, we're like so industrialized, we're like the 16th happiest country in the world, whereas Nigeria, according to one survey, is, is the happiest. So that'll just give you an idea of how, you know, while industrialization was important, it, it really, um, really wasn't, um, you know, what, what happiness was all about, per se. And um, so then, you know, we had other, we, you know, agriculture worked to a certain extent, industrialization, mechanization. Then I think we began to um, pin our hopes more on, on economics, on, um, on finances, you know, becoming richer, um, you know, using this technology, this, this mechanization to, to make things easier, to make money, to make us richer. All right, and so right now we've got, you know, especially the first world, the industrialized nations, we have a pretty good history of, of this attempt. And again, you've got to remember, these are all attempts. We're always trying to become happier as individuals and as a world. Um, according to the research, um, they've been studying happiness for about 40 years. They've been measuring it for a bit longer. And they've determined that, like, you know, with all the wealth we've accumulated, right now, here, like for example, here in the United States, we're about, um, we're about two and a half times richer um, per capita. We have um, two and a half t 
times more income, personal income now, than we did uh, 50 years ago around World War II, yet we're not any happier, okay? And this doesn't just relate to like the, um, the personal level of personal income, it also relates to uh, income as nations. Again, we're number 16 and there's like a lot of countries <laughs> ahead of us that are poorer, that are very poor. Um, so, you know, we came to realize, all right, well, money isn't about uh, what happiness is about. Um, this is something that I think many of us intuitively knew. This is kind of like wisdom that goes back to the Bible. Um, you know, we've known this, but now we have science. We've got, like, very clear, strong documentation from all over the world that, that money isn't what happiness is about. All right, so... Um, so we've got we've got other. How about my my uh, close up? <laughs> Give me my close up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. So we've got um, we've had uh, we've pinned our hopes on on other um, other things also. For example, technology. You know, now we've got like mass communication. We've got cell phones. We've got computers. We've got all this like uh, very high technology. You know, it's like the um, it's kind of like you know, a takeoff of the Industrial Revolution. Everything is like so much more refined, so much more sophisticated now, and still we're not any happier. Um, okay, so what's this all leading to? Um, there were, wait a minute, there were other revolutions. This was monumental. This, this was like a very, very special time in the history of the world. It was when we as a world awakened to the idea that freedom and equality um, are very important. Um, as a matter of fact, it's been demonstrated in, in happiness research that a country's level of freedom is a greater indication of how happy they will be than how rich they are. So freedom was very important. And this happened, you know, I think this initially happened with the Magna Carta. <laughs> and, and so then, you know, you had all these democracies being formed that people recognized that it was so much better for everyone if people ruled themselves and having some king or some, like, dictator, some tyrant just telling them what to do. You know, which often, uh, unfortunately, what ha the way that happens is, like, that, that the rulers sometimes tend to care for their needs more so than these for the, of others. So, you know, freedom, democracy, personal freedoms. We had um, equality. And, you know, this was major. I mean, like, you know, America, the home of the free. You know, we, we, we kind of, like, mistakenly believe that when we're fighting wars, you know, when we're fighting, you know, battles against other countries and all, that it's, like, to preserve our freedom. It is, it is, but you have to remember that our freedom, like peace, like technology, like food, like everything else we have, only has its value because it helps us either maintain our happiness or become happier. Okay, so we see that, that this freedom, this equality, was good to have, but again, you know, you got to realize, uh, I, got, I should change the, the title of this from happiness off the cuff to like, you know, the history of happiness and, uh, I don't know, <laughs> the future of happiness. But anyway, you've got to realize that all these things, um, and, and, and we can go on. I mean, there's like the medical revolution. I mean, right now, you know, we've extended life. Before, like um, a century ago, people used to live 40, 50 years. Now we're, you know, easily living 70, 80, 90. So we've gotten so many ad advances in, in medicine and education in, in, in so many areas. But here's the fact. Here's the fact. Um, here in the United States, the average level of happiness, we on, on average as a country, are about 70% um, happy. I mean, that, you know, that is not very happy. Think about it. If we were being graded, if we were being graded in school on our happiness level, it's actually 69 is the exact figure. That's like a high D. I mean, 65 is failing. Think about it. And, um, and then another statistic that they've um, found, on average, we're happy about 54% of the time. Okay, that is not, I mean, like, the, on average, people are spending half the time, all right, it's not necessarily feeling, feeling unhappy, because there's this other gray area where people are feeling neither happy nor unhappy, which is, I think, about 20% or so, but still, that's a lot of time each day not feeling happy. Um, so, anyway, we're, we're at the state that regardless, regardless of all these um, advances that, that we've gotten, our, our primary, our main, our only r true desire. This, the, um, the Dalai Lama says is an art of happiness. The only, he, you know, in Buddhism, like, 
they they recommend that we don't desire anything, but Dalai Lama says we should definitely desire happiness. And that really is our only desire because everything else is kind of like a means to it. Again, we're not, we're not as hap nearly as happy as we could be. And it's not as if like becoming much happier is so difficult because like, and this is a bit telling about how many here in the United States are are just even much less happy than the average. Because like here in the United States, about 20 or 25 percent of us are about 85 percent happy or happier. You know, they're much happier than that national average of 70. And I mean, this is great news. This is this this tells the rest of um, our population who isn't as happy that that happiness isn't all that difficult. And, and again, according to the research, you know, there's research that demonstrates that happiness isn't about making more money. So, I mean, 37% of the people on Forbes' list of wealthiest Americans are actually less happy than the average American. You know, advanced degrees, a high IQ, um, social status, these, these, all these things that we think we have to have to become happier have been demonstrated through decades of research to, to have either a very marginal or no effect on happiness. All right, so this should tell us that we could all become much, much happier, both as individuals and as a world. Okay, so, so where, where are we now? We, we pretty much know what doesn't work in making happiness. And, you know, again, we've had our, our political revolutions, our industrial, our, our sociological revolutions, you know, and we're at, a, we're at a very, very special point in the history of civilization, in the history of mankind. We're at the point where we're awakening to the realization that it's not, life isn't about more money, life isn't about more security, it's not about, you know, so many of the things that over these last, you know, few thousand years we've thought it's about. More and more people are beginning to understand that life, that life for all of us is really about happiness. It's, it's about being, feeling as happy as possible. And, and this, isn't just, this isn't just philosophy, because, you know, some people have said that, you know, back um, at the time of Aristotle, but, you know, people could have said, well, that's just a point of view. But, you know, now we have the science. We have the science that demonstrates not only when we ask people, because when, when we ask people, the vast majority say that happiness is their primary, their main goal in life, you know, their, their main purpose in living. So it's not, it's also not that we don't recognize this, because in a certain sense we do. Um, and there's also more scientific um, evidence that happiness really is what life is about. Um, for example, um, in terms of our biology as organisms, I mean, it's a very clearly established fact that um, we operate on a hedonic principle. And this, this goes for human beings, this goes for lower life forms, this, go, this goes for pretty much all life forms, that basically what we're doing from moment to moment, you know, throughout every day of our lives, is we're like trying to uh, minimize pain and enhance pleasure. That's all it is. You know, that every, that's all. And now naturally, it's not just for um, us, it's also for those around us. So for example, sometimes it's wise to kind of like diminish our own happiness for a while so that we can enhance the happiness of others and that's ultimately going to lead to a greater happiness for us as well. But uh, again, the, um, the science just demonstrates very clearly that happiness is what life is all about. And again, this is a very, very special time in the history of the world because the world is waking up to this. Um, there was, a, there was a Time Magazine article on happiness that appeared in January, and um, I found out afterwards, it was, it was, you know, it had about 64 pages on happiness, a very good um, collection of articles, about 20 of them. I found out later that, that that issue was the most requested back issue that Time had ever had. You know, people like, who didn't, couldn't buy it at the newsstand, so they asked for, they bought reprints. Um, all right. <laughs> again, this this like is a very very awesome time in the history of the world because like again wh what's happening is we've we're awakening and fairly quickly to the idea that it's not just that we recognize that happiness is what we really want and what happiness is all life all about, but now more and more of us are beginning to um, to understand through the media through the the, the literature 
that it's relatively easy for us to become much happier. I mean, like you've had like the pioneer in this was Michael Fordyce, who who basically turned happiness research in and focused it in the right way. And back in 1977, he had um, gleaned through the last, let's say, 15, 20 years of happiness research before him, and um, he basically put together a program for becoming happier, and and demonstrated that in as little as, as six weeks, a person can become. Um, 25% happier. And, and, and a New Zealand team in 1980, again, um, drawing from, from Fordyce's conclusions, demonstrated through two other um, mechanisms. Fordyce had, a, had his students like practice a lot, I think 14 fundamentals of happiness, a lot of learning and all. But these New Zealand um, experimenters, researchers, demonstrated so clearly how easy it is to become happier. They, um, they basically had their subjects, all their subjects did was like discuss happiness topics um, twice a week for four weeks, I think a total of eight hours, and they became 25% happier. And the other, the other um, method that Karen Hay, which was part of this New Zealand team, did was she just had her subjects recite happiness affirmations for 10 minutes each morning, and in two weeks, her subjects became about 25% happier, right? So again, we have the world awakening to the fact that, that happiness is what we most want, and now we have the world awakening to the fact that it's so much easier that, than we realize. We don't have to become rich. We don't have to become successful. We don't have to, be, to like do so many of the things that we thought we had to do. All right, so um, now this is, this is really monumental. This is like... Um, this is an awakening. This is awakening at, at the most basic level of, of our personal consciousness and at the most basic level of our consciousness as a society, as a civilization, you know. And, and it's beginning to reflect itself in, in, in society. Martin Seligman, the past president of the American Psychological Association, um, between 2003 and 2005, taught about fa uh, um, a thousand happiness coaches. And there are other happiness coaches that have received training in other ways. So people are actually training other people on an individual basis to become happier. Um, they're pretty soon, like this, I'm, I'm taping this um, August 26th, 2005. Now, there are some movies. There's a movie that was completed earlier this year that's called The Serious Business of Happiness. It's a docudrama about finding happiness. Okay, so that, that'll probably come out either later this year, probably, no, more so in, in 2006. There's another movie um, that was released in 2003, and it's going to be re-released um, fairly soon. It's called One Happy Movie. These uh, Florida, I think they're from Florida, Florida State University students, they went around the country. They wanted to demonstrate to people that after 9-11, that, you know, there are very many very happy people in, in this country. So that's what they did. And this is, it's a very uplifting, you know, powerful movie in that sense. Very inspiring. And that's going to be re-released re in, in select cities, major cities, um, I think in September, in about a month. But what's, what I think is even more telling is that um, in 2006, there's going to be a major documentary movie called In Pursuit of Happiness. It's uh, produced by Joel McEwen, who originally intended to create a movie that is showing us that like our um our industrialized efforts to, to to have more and more, to create more and more products, to have a more and more lavish lifestyle is really wrecking havoc on our environment and really risking the happiness of our future generations. That was his, his intent. But then he realized that um, he realized that wait, why are we buying all these products? We're buying all these products to become happier. And then he began to like study the happiness uh, research, uh, literature and notice how unhappy we were. So this this documentary, which is going to be narrated, it's narrated by Danny Glover. It has um, Howard Zinn, I think Michael Moore is in it, um, Ed Begley Jr., um, some top um, happiness researchers. This guy, um, Richard Davidson, who's been pioneering a way to. Um, he hooks people up to, to these um, imaging machines and determines how happy they are. So it's not just like they're telling us they're happy, it's like physiologically it's being demonstrated. So this movie is going to come out, I think, in early 2006. And um, there's more, there's more. Um, 
there is a, um, a, a British television company that um, is right now working on a project that based on the scientific research, not on the folklore, not on the folk wisdom that may or may not be true, but on scientific findings, they're going to attempt to make an entire town in England happy. And that's going to be a, a series. That's going to be a program on, on British television. Um, there's, a, there's two happiness uh, programs that are being developed for Canadian television. So, all right, basically the point is that happiness over these next couple of years is poised to really emerge in the, into, the, um, into the main media, into the public consciousness. Okay, so what does this mean? This, this couldn't be more monumental for the history of the world. Um, think about it. I mean, we may not have realized it. We may have been so busy trying to stay alive, trying to like protect ourselves from our enemies, trying to just like not have to work so hard in the past, maybe we didn't think much about happiness, right? But it's a different world. You know, many of us have the time to reflect. And finally, in the history of the world, um, many individuals, you know, Lionel, myself, many other of us, of us who are promoting happiness, um, but especially the scientists, the psychologists, they've come to the understanding, you know, um, before psychology was about studying pain, about emotional pain and, and emotional disease and all, then, you know, again, Martin Seligman, um, past president of the American Psychological Association, founded this um, positive psychology movement in 1998 that hones in on happiness as the goal of psychology, as the goal of, of, of why we study psychology. So you have these, these scientists Finally, after, you know, after I, I, psychology is like, I think about 100 years old in the United States. I don't, I don't know how old it is in general as a science. But they're finally tuned into the idea that, hey, the reason we overcome our, our negative emotions, the reason we work on understanding our mind is to become happier. And so you've got, you, you even have, this is like so important. This has gone from not just psychologists and people like me who are promoting it, you know, as, um, lay people, but you have Richard Layard, who is um, one of the top economists in the world. He founded Europe's leading economic institution. Um, he came out this year with a book titled Happiness that presents the findings. He, I mean, the, the, the value of this book is that it, it very clearly presents the findings that happiness isn't about money, has, happiness isn't about education, that he basically, from an economist standpoint, is telling us, listen, we have been like so misguided in terms of like having our, our country um, guide its national policy and perhaps our world to a greater extent, our international policy on this search for more wealth. You know, so this is very key that you have a, a figure who's not a psychologist, who's actually an economist, now focusing the business community on the fact that happiness is really what life is all about and that, that the ways we've been trying to achieve it for the most part haven't worked because we haven't been relying on the science. All right, so, um, and there's more. There's more in terms of like um, e um, international developments. The country of Bhutan, um, back 30 years ago, the, the emperor or the king there decided that they were going to measure as their success as a country not gross domestic product or econo and an economic measurement as most um, countries do, but gross national happiness. And they sponsor a conference every year to promote this concept. It's going to, um, Britain actually commissioned a, a major study last year to study that, to study how the country could implement um, uh, policies on the governmental level to enhance happiness. All right, so again, this, this couldn't be more monumental. This, this is really about what humanity has most been about. We're awakening to it. And in these next couple of years, what should we expect? Okay, here's probably the major thing. I mean, you know, Lionel's promoting his happiness clubs. I'm working right now on establishing a 12-step happiness group because these 12-step groups are so successful. So um, um, hopefully, because, and the other thing is like happiness is such a no-brainer. Again, you know, with Karen Hayes' experiment where they um, discuss happiness for, for four weeks and became 25% happiness, 
happier. It's not that you have to have professionals teaching others how to become happier. We could figure this out ourselves. So in addition to the clubs and the self-help groups, the, the, I think the main thing is that business is going to come around to realize that not just in terms of individual coaching, like what happens with, you know, with the coaches now, but happiness is a product. Um, everything we buy, everything we buy, every service we buy, every product we, we buy has as its goal are becoming happier, but so many of the things we buy just don't work. Otherwise, so many of us would be so much happier. Again, 37% of, of the people on Forbes' list of wealthiest Americans are less happy than the average American. So, so you should see, like, over the next few years, happiness business is springing up. Um, I'm working on a book with a couple of guys, um, with actually Dr. Douglas Ram also, who's a, a psychologist in Pennsylvania, and he's got published data that his formula for happiness, which what is what this book is going to be based on, not only helped um, individuals become happier, but it was tried on juvenile offenders and helped them to like stay within the law. You know, they didn't break laws, they became better people. So basically, I'm working on a, on a book to get happiness into school systems. Um, naturally, we're not as evolved that like the school systems are going to recognize the value of that so very clearly right now. So it's going to be a language arts skills development book that's going to teach third graders their reading and writing skills as they learn how to become happier, better people. Anyway, I'm running out of time. Um, over the next couple of years, expect to see happiness emerging more and more. There's going to be real reality shows where people compete to become happier. There are going to be like happiness nanny shows like Super Nanny where, where a happiness coach will go into a family you know, that's not very happy, teach them how to become happier. This really could not be more monumental because this, again, is what life is about, not just for us, but for every organism on the planet. And it we're finally awakening to it and so yeah these next couple of years are going to be amazing in terms of like what happens you know as we become happier it's going to be so awesome all right well that's all we have time for today thanks for watching in the future we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life this is george ortega saying be good think well feel very happy and i hope you'll join us again here on the happiness show happiness is powerful it's our underlying need Happiness is why we live each day Happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy